Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. We're out here in May. This is May 3rd in the mountains of Colorado and it is snowing currently right now. It's actually been snowing for the last 24 hours straight. I was trying to wait for a break to film this video because I felt like I should film it like in front of the truck since it's all about the truck. But here we are while it's snowing. So to catch you up to speed, this is a truck. This is a crazy truck, F-250 Tremor. This is a Diamondback truck covers and myself LLOD collab build. Um, so Diamondback bought the truck, kind of sponsoring the build in that sense. And I am choosing everything that goes on it and we're gonna do a bunch of fun stuff. So we're kind of, it's a video to showcase the truck, the partners on the truck and kind of building an ultimate adventure vehicle. But not just to show off the truck, it's gonna culminate in a raffle where one of you guys can win it. Uh, details on how exactly that is gonna work is to come, but we have chosen the main charity. We'll probably do like a couple charities, but one main charity that's chosen. Super excited about the charity. It's one that is uh, near and dear to my heart personally, and hopefully you guys will be uh, really excited to, to hear more about that. So that's coming in a future video. But the truck, it's changed a lot over the last month. It went from a relatively stock Ford Tremor to what you see now <laughs> under all this snow. Uh, but basically, I have a bunch of uh, partners and sponsors and whatever for this build that have helped transform into what it is today. And it's not quite done. We gotta add a couple things. I'm adding a couple things to kind of figure out the final weight, how that's gonna sit on the suspension. And then I'm gonna adjust the suspension accordingly, whether that's with kind of lift spacers or a full new suspension system or what. Haven't figured it out yet because I still want a lot of the payload and capability and all this kind of stuff. So it's, it's a decision that I'm still trying to figure out, um, but I'm gonna wait till we're at full load. So that's kind of still to come but a lot of the other stuff is, is largely here. So first stop on this video tour, this kind of hodgepodge of clips that I'm gonna be putting together in this video is over at True Automotive. So Fab Fours sent out a bumper and the fender kit. You watch the previous video, I talk about why this fender kit is important, why it's kind of an integral piece of the build and essentially it's to fit bigger tires, but there's a lot more to it than just these flares. So anyway, that's a big involved install that True Automotive did. So huge shout out to them. So we're gonna get into the True Automotive portion. They're a shop here in the Denver area. So if you're looking for a quality off-road shop, True Automotive is your ticket. I'm gonna link to everything I talk about down in the video description below. So go give these companies some support because they're doing awesome things and they're, they're helping to support this build for a good cause. So over at True Automotive, where they basically hacked up this truck to get these fenders on, they also installed, mounted, and balanced the wheels, which are BFG uh, KM3s, 39 inch by 1350 on Black Rhino Armory wheels. These are uh, some new wheels that have a very nice, give the truck kind of a very nice look and stance. So we'll get into that. So you take the fenders off, uh, you do a bunch of cutting here, and it's kind of cool, I guess, they include uh, the plate and even the foam that you shoot up in here to seal everything off. So that's all re-foamed, plate covered. You do some pretty gnarly cuts on some big stuff here, because uh, this comes down lower and you need the clearance, but they provide a new bracket that connects those two. So I know a lot of people will say, why didn't you just do fiberglass fenders? Uh, which you could do, but you'd still have to do all this stuff if you really wanted the clearance. Uh, and the beauty of this kit from Fab Fours is because it comes with just like super detailed instructions, cutting templates for everything. I'll see if I can find one laying around here, uh, as well as the reinforcement brackets and stuff. So it's done in a 
proper <laughs> as proper as you can do with cutting out a bunch of a bunch of big stuff so really uh, from what Austin and the guys have told me the kit is actually really really detailed even comes with the little touch-up paint and everything you need so a super inclusive kit with just like great instructions and even some video instructions as well so here's some of the stuff that was cut off so it comes with these little templates that you they're like big stickers that you put on and it tells you where you need to cut and stuff. So really time intensive installation. You gotta take a bunch of stuff out. You gotta drill a bunch of holes. You gotta do a bunch of cutting, but very detailed uh, instructions. So here's the other side. I was saying it gives me serious like Mad Max vibes. Like I kinda just wanna drive the truck like this. And then, so here's the fenders that are removed. Same deal, there was templates that were stuck on here, the yellow templates. And so they cut on those template lines for both sides. So we're here at True Automotive. This is Austin. He runs the place, so to speak. <laughs> I've known Austin for a while since he was back at his old little shop. And now we have this big, glorious, giant shop. So, what do you do here? You work a lot on Toyotas and Jeeps, but you can pretty much do everything, huh? I would say, you know, we're definitely more of your specialty off-road shop, but uh, I'd like to think we focus on like a lifestyle, servicing, helping people fulfill their dreams of what they want their vehicle to do. Yeah. Um, and that's really my goal, you know, no job is really too small or too big, and if it is, then we can kind of help find somebody that'll suit, suit you to get the job done. Cool. Uh, super non-pretentious shop, but knows what they're talking about. This is one of Austin's personal rigs over here. Oh, it's so <laughs> No, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's a true wheeling rig. It uh, is. They just got this big lift, so if you need van stuff done or giant truck stuff done, they got you covered there as well. Uh, and they, yeah, I mean, off-road shop, you guys do kind of everything under the sun if yep. it relates to the off-road world. We have like a, an electrical specialist, we have a drivetrain specialist, um, we have two techs that were previously at Toyota dealerships. Um, so we kind of really try to keep everything in-house um, and really our biggest difference in my opinion is just honest quality. We're honored to work on Mike's truck. Yeah, cool. I'm excited for this build. Yeah, so these fenders, uh, I kind of teed Austin up before bringing the truck in and he was like, oh yeah, no problem. And it is no problem, but it's a lot, it's a lot of work. There's a lot of cutting and a lot of drilling and a lot of stuff that goes into just putting on quote unquote fenders, <laughs> really. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. But the kit, super detailed, I guess. I, I actually am very impressed. You know, like these little corner pieces, you know, you come in and cut this all out. They give you really, really detailed templates. Um, I feel like it's so often you get the instructions and it's like, Oh, that's for a different model or, uh, you know, it, it just some silly instructions. And that's so frustrating when you're dealing with aftermarket. That's really what we do a lot of is aftermarket. And this kit, although it's very time consuming, is, is very detailed in their instructions. They give you stickers to put on where you exactly need to cut. Because we are cutting up a brand new truck, right? Yeah. And <laughs> you want to make sure that's done correctly. So yeah, Fords aren't necessarily your guy's specialty, but Correct. a truck's a truck. Four by four by is a four by four, right? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So if you are in the greater Denver area or Colorado at all and looking for a good, honest off-road shop that I have personal connections with, Austin's a buddy of mine, also hosted this year's <laughs> toy drive that we did. So cool, good heart, good heart, good guy, good shop. If you need anything, <laughs> True Automotive. Thanks, I'll link guys. them down below. Okay, on to the next stop in our journey. Now the truck is built, it's sitting on 39s, uh, and I wanted to add some lighting to it because it seemed a little bit naked. So on this trip, I head down to Arizona, down to Williams, Arizona, which is where KC Highlights is headquartered. They've been there since 75. It's like a small town south of the Grand Canyon, Route 66 is kind of goes through there and it's kind of a historic town, but it's a small town, small town vibe. So it was cool. I wanted to go down and visit. So while I was down there, uh, one of the people that works there, Taylor, helped me install all the lights. So we knocked out everything you see in just one day there. Um, and so I'm gonna get into 
that video now. So huge shout out to KC for having me down there and supplying the lights for the build. Look at this little tunnel I drive through. Anyway, just about at KC where we're gonna install a bunch of lights on the truck. Uh, just drove 12 hours from Colorado down to Arizona last night, stayed in the Best Western down here, and we're rolling in now. Hey, so I'm here at KC Highlights. We're actually a bit into the install already, but I just kind of wanted to show you what we're doing here on the old Tremor. Uh, Taylor's actually helping me out personally. We uh, are here doing some installs. I actually just got a COVID test, if you're wondering, um, and it's just us back here, but we're gonna not have masks on because we both actually are good to go. But for those of you that wanna want to complain about that stuff, feel free to in the comments below. But what we got here is we got some bracketry on the front runner rack here for the Pro 6. So they actually just built the Pro 6. And I may show you a little bit of kind of behind the scenes stuff, but I opted to curve it. I like the, I like the functionality of the curve. And also we we're kind of debating, matches some lines up here. Taylor's wrapping up some stuff on getting the switch pros yeah. wired in up here uh, in the engine bay. I need to buy, get a good mount for it. There's a bracket that SDHQ sells. And then we passed this through the firewall. That was a pain. And that'll come here into the head unit, which I'm not sure. We may mount here or somewhere else, but got to figure that out. But we're just kind of getting the, the main stuff out of the way so we can mount some lights. And then we got some cyclones that we'll probably do last. Nobody likes installing those. And then we got some Flex Era 4s that we're going to mount on some ditch brackets that are going to attach here that we actually uh, painted some of the holes we drilled out a little bit bigger. And then I mounted a couple C2s back here. So the C2s, two of them, are going to be both chase lights if I need them, reverse lights, and then I'll be able to dim them and angle them down for, you know, camping, cooking, camp table type lights. So I need to figure out how I want to run these wires, if I want to like drill a hole or just pass them under the gasket. But that's it. Just wanted to kind of forgot to film before we got too far. But we're here in Williams at KC's facility. This is their kind of manufacturing and shipping and everything facility we got going on. So I'll show you more about the truck, but I just wanted to give you a quick, quick peek. She oh, we got power. We got power. Sweet. Sweet. That's always a good sign. So this is a Switch Pro switch controller, eight switches. You can do all kinds of stuff. I'll talk about that later. But yeah, I got to get back to work. We got a lot to do. Let's get to it. It's a big truck. So all this freaking water bill after this. <laughs> we finished it up, Taylor. I also did not know you were doing that. <laughs> Taylor and I, uh, and a couple of the other guys came in and helped us kind of tag team some stuff. But the lights are in. I'll show you in a second. Taylor was like, maybe we should wash it first. And I was like, you know, I don't like washing trucks, but we'll go ahead and do it. So I will tell you more about the lights, why I have them set up the way I do, what they are. Uh, but first, a quick wash. So I'll give you guys a quick tour while uh, Taylor rinses the truck off. This is where we did all the install here, kind of their workshop area. This is a bunch of storage and stuff, pieces, bits and pieces. They have an injection molder. Uh, I believe they were injection molding AAE. They're down another Arizona company. And then here's where a lot of the assembly and stuff happens. So 
got different stations for different kind of Pro 6 assembly and a bunch of other stuff going on. Some packaging over there. Some shipping going on over here. So pretty much 100%, I think Taylor was saying, 100% of your KC products go right out, go right out that door and are kind of handled in these several workstations there. And we want some stickers. We got a few here. What else do we got? Ooh, this is a cool little koozie. Or cozy, as some people say. We were talking about their original colors are these yellow, orange, and kind of orangey red. Very similar to the Toyota colors, which I like. And then if you come visit KC, this is locked, but you come through this door into this little kind of entry hangout area where you can see some of their merch. You can see a lot of their light offerings. You can touch, touch and feel them. So cool little spot. So if you're ever in Williams, <laughs> swing by. Multicam black, of course. And they do have their own copy. And then yeah, just some offices and stuff back through here. Mugs down here. I'm gonna see if I can take one. I'm gonna see if I can take one. But yeah, bunch of stuff. Bunch of stuff is handled all through here. If anyone wants me to steal them some product, I got you. And they got some Toyotas. They got some Toyotas lying around too. So KC was founded back in the 70s and they have a lot of this kind of retro-ish art from back then. This facility was actually built back in the 70s, I think the mid 70s. So a lot of history, a lot of history in this building. It's very cool. And then this is the other, the other one I like. Cool. Taylor, I stole a mug. Can I have this? Yeah, you can have it. A little camping mug. Cool beans. Hey, she cleans up pretty good. Look at that. Who'd have thunk it, man? All right, so I'll show you some of uh, what went down today. Uh, under the hood, we installed a Switch Pros uh, 8, 8 Switch 1. And then so in this bumper here, this is a Fab Fours bumper, we, it fits a, uh, Flex Era 4. And these things are broit, broit. There's a little room in here. We may, we may shove something later. Uh, but that's what we got down there. And then we got Ditch. This is another FE4. Both of them are combo, so wide and spot on the same one. So these are them. And then we put a Pro 6 up top. We did radius it. This is on the front runner, and this is just a front runner mount, light bar mount here. So it's curved a little bit, you can see. And I believe these two end ones are wide, and then the middle ones are driving kind of combo beam. So that's that, and then I installed some of these lights up here. Uh, so these are just kind of like camp area side lights. I'll probably angle them out a little more. Those are C2s and then these are C2s also, the work super flood. Uh, so these aren't spot at all. They're like as spread as can go. So I gotta figure out the wiring back here cause it's kinda on the diamond back, but I got two of them back here. So I'll, you can set up the switch pros to like flash and strobe and dim and everything. So these are gonna be like multi-use lights. They're gonna be for when I need a little more reversing power or if it's really dusty and I want to turn on some chase lights but also because it's a truck and I do everything on the tailgate cook and everything I put them here so that they could angle down and illuminate the workspace so these things are just mounted on the diamondback cleat here just right on that cleat I just use this bolt put it through there and now these are both reverse 
chase and camping scene lights. So we'll be able to kick those on, kick on these camping lights as well. Uh, we were just here for a day and doing a lot of stuff. So I also got some cyclones. Nobody likes installing rock lights though. So I said, let's just save that for the end. And if we get to it, cool. If not, I'll do it later. So we'll do it later. So that, that's that. And then I'll uh, turn them on for you. Actually, Taylor, you wanna turn them on? I think the key is maybe in there. Maybe it's in there. I'm not sure. Oh, key's there. All right. So we wired them up to a Switch Pro. I'll show that to you in a second, but I'm gonna have Taylor kind of kick some of these lights on. Start with the fogs. So these are the FE4s and they're so much brighter than the headlights and the Ford headlights are pretty good, honestly. So those are those. And then we can kick on the Pro 6 up top. So the Pro 6 <laughs> blinded me, but you can see the radius. So as I walk, this is where the light is getting sent. And I like that because that means you're illuminating in front of you a huge basically radius going on so that's cool and then we have the ditch over here which right now have the orange backlight yep. on so that kicks on so we have the backlight wired up as well as in the fogs and you can kick those on and blind me if you want oh yeah. so I have these hooked up. Again, this is the combo beam. So I have probably to dial this in a little bit, but the idea is the Pro 6 illuminates to a certain area, and then this picks up from the edge of that and illuminates even more. So I like my ditch lights angled to the side more than a lot of people you see because when I'm out on the trail and stuff, I really like illuminating to the sides to kind of find a camp spot at night and whatnot. So that's the layout of those lights, and then I um, can show you these side lights as well. So these kind of kick on again. I have them angled a little bit too low, but those will basically illuminate everything around the truck. And I really like that for, for camping and whatnot. And then the rears, again, can be reverse lights, they can be chase lights, they can be whatever. But then when you angle them down here, obviously, it's nice and illuminated. So that, that's the setup. And you wanna kick them all on real quick? Or all the fronts? Thanks. Here we have the light, the light show, full on, going on down here. So the fogs are angled pretty low. These are not DOT, these are crazy, crazy bright. So I have those just hooked up to a, to a switch and the Pro 6 is obviously up top or super bright. So that's it. It's what we got. It's what we got going on. I hope you liked it. I'm just on this little DJI thing that's super wide angle, so. But yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, High five. Boom. I'm stoked on it. I think it looks really good. I really do. Taylor likes it. I'm pretty amped on it. I'm glad that we went with the flex fours in the bumper too. Yep. Um, they fill out that spot pretty nicely. Looks really good. Yeah, it's cool. I wasn't sure with the measurements and everything if we could fit them down here. So we were actually sure it's tight, but it, you can get the covers on and off. And yeah, you that's... can get the covers on. It's it's nice. Yeah, we were planning on putting the threes down here, but then I we grabbed a four and we we're like, man, a four fits. The threes might more fit light. On this side. More light is always better. Yeah, we were kind of we grabbed a three to kind of see if it would fit over here, and a three kind of, because it's triangular, kind of fills this space perfectly. Um, so I may throw one of those on, but kind of just ran out of time today. So that is it. The Pro Six is high enough to where the clearance lights you can still see them underneath. Not that it really matters, but if anybody was interested. And then all the amber backlights really match with all of the other amber stuff going on in the old Ford. So that's it. It's sweet. It's sweet. Taylor, did you have a good time?
I let Taylor drive this thing to yeah. to lunch. We went and got I, pizza. I like this trip. It's a yeah. lot different from a Tacoma. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> way better on the road, I want to say. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was fun. I mean, anytime that I get to step away from the computer and like actually get to wrench on vehicles for a day is a good day. Uh huh. And plus, like working on a vehicle that's brand new and like has really cool purpose is like actually really fun. So yeah, it was it was a blast. So it was a good time. And then Taylor, you'll see him on KC's YouTube channel. Yeah. So he does a lot of educational videos showing, you know, talking some of the science behind the lights and Getting comparisons nerdy. and doing some install stuff. So KC has a YouTube channel. And this is the Taylor from the <laughs> KC YouTube. We're, trying, we're so. trying to grow it. Yeah. Cool. Hey, you got homework, though. Yeah? Yeah. What was that? You got rock lights to install on this. Oh, thing. yeah. I mentioned that earlier. <laughs> I was saying everybody hates installing rock lights, so we saved that for the end. So yep. we'll get to those. Yeah, I showed them in the back seat there, but I gave her a quick wash. And then we're heading over to get it wrapped. And that's a wrap. All right. That's a wrap, yeah. And then while I was in Arizona, actually, ImageCraft. So ImageCraft is a company that does everything with images really. So wallpapers and posters and vinyl wrap, which is what we're, we're talking about in this video. Uh, and they are the single licensed distributor of vinyl Multicam. Multicam, the camo company, who Multicam is the sponsor of the build. Thanks Multicam. Uh, that is a licensed camouflage. It's popular because it's largely used in the US military, the regular Multicam, the Multicam original. This is the black variant of Multicam, but it's a licensed camo, so there's really only one person, ImageCraft, that can make this vinyl. So they make the vinyl and they'll ship it wherever, so you can use a local installer or whatever, but they also do some installs at ImageCraft. So I was like, I wanna go see what ImageCraft's about, see their processes, which are crazy, like way crazier than I thought. Like I didn't think much, you just print on a vinyl wrap, but actually there's way more to it than that. So anyways, I went and saw how their facilities are operated and had the truck wrapped in one day while we were there. So the wrap process we used wasn't uh, tear the whole vehicle apart and wrap it, somewhat because I was on a timeline, but also because whoever wins this truck, I don't want them to have a crazy, crazy headache to peel the wrap off. When you have a wrap that you put on under, take off the panels and the lights and the molding and everything, technically it's a good wrap. It won't you know, it, it, it will kind of theoretically last longer because all of the seams are tucked in. But what it means is removing the wrap is a giant, huge nightmare. Um, so I didn't really want whoever owns it. They might not want a truck that this is this loud, like multi-cam wrap. So they'll be able to peel it off much, much, much. I mean, it'll be 10 times easier. Uh, so that's, there's a variety of reasons we did that. But anyways, they knocked the wrap out in one day. And then we're gonna get into that right now. We got black intentionally because I kind of wanted to leave some accents in there. And actually previously on my Tacoma, I have a lot of issues with the, it peeling up on these complex wraps. So I'm just going to leave that black, but I think the little color variation and pops are pretty cool here. So here's some subtle stuff I did with vinyls underneath the wrap that you can see. And then on a fresh wrap, there'll be some like kind of tiny bubbles here and there that'll work themselves out. 
And then on the back, I was like, eh, I'll show a little bit of the Ford logo. So it kind of had chrome around it. So we wrapped a bit of the logo and left a bit of it showing. And then the side is just one continuous piece. So you can see the pattern carries over, obviously here, through here. And we did the same thing with the front logo. And then I like the look of the black black roof, so kept that black. Also saved some time, obviously, because you didn't have to wrap the roof. But it is, it's gorgeous. So I'm here at ImageCraft, and they do a lot of like fine art stuff, big print things. They, have, they do a lot of these kind of famous National Geographic prints, but really specialize in a lot of uh, interesting media type prints. They do these kind of like acrylic, metallic. Actually, they print on metal full on uh, and do a lot of just basically everything with printing, honestly. So big, big banner stuff, big billboard stuff. So this is, it's hard to tell on camera, but this is back lit. So the light is shining through from the backside printed on fabric so this is really popular for companies to use at trade shows and stuff so they don't have to basically they can just roll it up i guess and then unroll it and set up a big huge illuminated image but package it down nice and small and then another thing they do a fair amount of are these super high resolution massive maps this is you can't really tell on camera this is like a 10 foot tall map a lot of wallpaper things, but they are also the licensed vinyl printer, the only licensed vinyl printer of Multicam. So if you order Multicam stickers or anything off of my site or anywhere really, if it's the licensed stuff, it comes from ImageCraft. So they're the ones wrapping my truck, obviously, and I'm working up a wrap with them for this topographic print. So we've been going back and forth with a bunch of colors and picking them out and printing different kind of colors and varieties. So this is a van wrap. This is a sneak peek of kind of what I got proposed for the van, changing the colors a little bit to actually kind of match the wheels I'm using. So they do everything like that so if you're ever looking for a vehicle wrap, obviously in my industry, these guys can help you out. But there's a big facility. I didn't actually realize there's such a major operation going on. So they have all kinds of crazy photograph, dark room printers, a bunch of art stuff. They do a lot of like big corporate artwork as well. Um, and just printers running kind of all over the place. This is actually, I mean, it's huge to me, but it's a relatively small printer, all things considered. Uh, and then we'll kind of head back here. I think we got some, some prints going in the back. And then here's some like brushed, like stainless steel that they print just directly on. And then they can CNC cut out things out of here as well. They do a lot of this stuff actually in the Phoenix Suns arena as well so corporate and art they actually have a wood shop back over here where they can make custom frames and all this kind of stuff and just obviously super high resolution it's actually after it was laminated and they print on like foam board type stuff and then here's where all the big dogs are this is where your vinyl wraps and stuff will print. And this is actually, it's all climate controlled, obviously, but also humidity controlled. So they got to keep all of the humidity levels perfect in order for the printing to stay completely accurate. 
So this is one of their older machines. This is for printing like full size billboard stuff going on. So, oh, the UV. Is the UV curing the ink instantly? So this is printing some big wallpaper. That little purple blue light is a UV light that cures the print instantly. And then, so this is getting printed on kind of a canvasy material. And so this is what they use to print a bunch of stuff. They do a bunch of wallpapers for big hotels and casinos and stuff like that, but really cool stuff just walking through here and seeing everything go down. So then some of it gets printed and then laminated, which then kind of changes the, the color and the, the feel of the material. And so that's what is going on here. And this is actually Ken who's been helping me with all of my multicam needs through the years. So they can also print just straight up. So this is just a regular sheet of birch plywood and printed directly onto it. This is another giant piece of fabric. Just actually getting illuminated from these windows back here. actually this acoustic panel stuff they can cut out shapes obviously and cutouts and make little forms for acoustic panels and they can print on this as well so Ken was telling me some people in big industrial buildings have like big wood faux beams that are printed acoustic panels so they want acoustic paneling but they want it to like blend in so they can print whatever on these and they can disguise them as beams and stuff which I was I was fascinated by crazy so this is a this is acoustic panel but printed with wood grain on it so yeah it was cool for me to see where this stuff you know I ship I ship out multicam cutout stickers pretty much every day and this is this is where it's all made Cool, so hope you enjoyed that kind of peek into a little bit of behind the scenes with all these companies and all these partners. Huge shout out again and huge thanks to all of them. Again, I'll link to all their relevant stuff uh, down below and I'll probably make a full build page on my website uh, to put the Ford and talk about all the build components on it. So that way you can be like, oh, what did you use for that? Or what did you use for that? Well, I'll have a big list. Uh, I haven't made that yet, but when I do, I'll put it down in the video description below. And so some of you guys may be asking like, why'd you do, why'd you do this, Mike? Don't you wrench on your own trucks? Don't you do that? And I do, I don't like it, honestly. I'm one of the guys that wrenches on their trucks but doesn't really enjoy it. But the main reason that I wanted to do it for this was A, to highlight uh, some great companies that are involved in the build. I couldn't highlight them as well if I was just doing stuff in my garage because I probably wouldn't film it and my garage is kind of a wreck anyway. So part of it was to uh, kind of highlight some of the sponsors but also to make sure that the work was done better than I would do it in my garage. On my own vehicles, sometimes I take some shortcuts or whatever. This vehicle is eventually gonna go and raffle off and I want to give it to someone in just like an amazing state, knowing that everything was done by the professionals and no corners were cut. That would involve a lot, a lot, a lot of my time to do it. So I figured having the professionals do it would be cool. So it's kind of like a win-win kind of situation. You get a truck that you know everything was touched uh, by professionals and not just me, Joe Schmo in my garage. So anyway, that's why we did that with this truck in that way. And hopefully it was enjoyable. Uh, the truck's not quite done yet, so we're gonna do a little bit more. So I'll continue to highlight um, the upgrades and modifications to it. But it's really, I mean, when I bought it, it was ready for adventures, but now it's like pretty much ready. Like I need to toss the winch on, which I'll probably do in the next week-ish. But yeah, it's pretty much ready to go. So I hope you've enjoyed it up to this point. 
Uh, my hands are getting kind of numb <laughs> with all the snow, <laughs> snow falling on me. So I think I'm gonna wrap the video up here. I know it was a really long one already. So hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, comments, anything like that, comment down below in the video description. Always appreciate it. And again, huge shout out to Diamondback for which none of this would be possible. So they make the truck cover on the back. So check them out if you're looking for an awesome Made in America product from a really, really awesome company. Diamondback truck covers is your jam. And then one thing real quick, I actually wanna highlight, I just got approval, I got a link uh, there. I'll probably make a, like a separate video about this, but I figured I would toss it in this video too. A lot of people ask, Mike, how do you find trails? And I have books, I use the <laughs> internet obviously, Google Maps, sometimes I just pinpoint a place. I use a variety of apps, uh, Gaia and Onyx and a, a bunch of stuff. BFG has been working on an app for a long time, a trail app uh, that I've been a part of. I'm part of kind of the founding group of people. I just got an exclusive link to give to you guys, to give to my audience that will let you download this thing early before it is launched to the public. So it's not really in beta stage, it's like nearly complete, it's gonna launch very soon. But I'm giving you an opportunity to get in early and you basically get like a founder's edition, like kind of placard type thing on your profile, you get some exclusive discounts, you get a whole extra year for free. Uh, so I'm not gonna talk too much on it because I'm just kind of like tacking this onto the end of the video, but I'll put that link down below click that link. There's a little intro video that's going to tell you all about it. Uh, and it's kind of like a social app. You can earn points, you can enter for giveaways, you can do all kinds of cool stuff. Um, and then there's like incentivize, they're going to incentivize like trail cleaning and, and the whole social aspect as well. But also it's just a very easy to use trail, you know, off-road trail app. So the link that I'm putting down below tells you way more. And again, I'll probably talk more in a future video, but I wanted to just get it in because I just got approval to, to share it with you guys. So I'm excited about that. All right, well, whew, longest video ever. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, until next time, guys, take care.